Alright. Anna, you're directing. Action. Hi there, my name's Peter Green. I'm from Boise, Idaho, and this is our story. It all started out when we got a waveboard for the family. We all loved it. It's a little board where you put two feet on it and you push back and forth to make it go. Now, I thought this was a great invention, and so I wanted to make it powered. I went and talked to my dad, and he's the kind of person who thinks, well, when you have something and you don't know how to do it, you can't do it correctly. So he took the time in trying to think of a way to make this little thing powered so we could have more fun on it. Hi, my name's Rob. I'm from Boise, Idaho, and we are here to present to you Liquid Rome's new Rome board. So what we want to describe with the start is how this thing came about. So Peter had talked about having a wave board in the family. So Peter used the wave board. My other son, John, who's 15, used the wave board. I used the wave board. And I have to admit, I looked at how maneuverable this wave board was, and I just couldn't get over it. We could wave board into the garage, turn around in about a three-foot circle, and come back out. That's something that I just couldn't get my head around. I could do it. I couldn't understand it. So Peter came to me and said, you know what, Dad, we have to build a powered wave board. And I'm like, yeah, right, that's going to happen. So he looks at it and thinks, well, Dad's got to figure things out. Well, the reality is Dad's got to nap a lot, Dad's pretty lazy, and Dad's got some other interests in life. But you know what, he kept bugging me and he kept bugging me. And eventually I started to think about why does this wave board make forward motion so easy why is it so maneuverable at low speed, but yet it's stable because we wouldn't fall off? So as I thought through this, finally the aha moment came. Of course, where did it come? I'm laying in bed taking a nap. So the aha moment comes and I realize that the wave board works because it works on the same principle as a bicycle. Something that had been invented hundreds of years ago. Or, I don't know maybe a hundred years ago, but certainly uh, a long time ago. So the idea is, in a bicycle, the result for the end user is they can go fast and they can steer by leaning the bicycle. Then, when a user goes slow, they steer completely differently. And that's where the magic of the waveboard was. It steered two different ways. When a user goes fast, it steers by leaning. When a user goes slow, it steers by a principle of keeping the center of gravity directly over the person's feet. That's why they don't fall over. So once I realized that, I began to try and struggle with, okay, so we want to build a powered wave board, and how do we do that and not lose the magic sauce of keeping gravity directly over a person's feet? I wanted to copy the incredible invention of the bicycle. I wanted to take that magic to stand-up transportation. Now, a waveboard is cool, but if you've used it, you know after about 10 minutes you're pretty much exhausted. So we spent the next two years working on this basic principle, and that's what we're going to share with you over this next period of time, is how we built stand-up transportation that is maneuverable, stable, and the most fun you've ever seen. Hi everyone. We're out in the green garage right now, and we moved out here to take a few minutes and show how the transition from our aha moment of we need stand-up transportation that operates like a bike. So I'm going to take you through that a little bit step by step. Hey Anna. So we had a starting point as a wave board, and in one weekend, starting on a Saturday morning, we destroyed, by the way, and took apart an electric racer scooter, we destroyed the wave board, and we destroyed a skateboard, and we also found and pulled some spinning trucks. This is the remnants of our original board that we put together. We powered it with an electric motor, 
we had two lead acid batteries hooked up underneath here. And we took our product and we moved the wave board so that it would pivot in the middle. And we had a front steering pivot that would go left and right. By Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock, we had it hooked up, built. Of course, we didn't have much of a throttle. But all we had to do was click a switch, and we were off. Five minutes later, we realized that we had something really worth pursuing here. There you go. All right, everyone. Last time we talked, you had just learned that we, in two days, had had a huge blast of fun. So while Peter and John went off working with the electric board and having a blast, I sat down at a ping pong table in our garage with the knowledge that we knew what we needed to accomplish at this point. High speed fun, low speed maneuverability, center of gravity over the board at low speed. If we could accomplish those three things, we would have a winner. So the final hand industrial design that we came up with allowed a user to place a foot here and place a foot here. Very similar to snowboarding. The feet don't move, they stay in one position. We hit the motor and had a set of back wheels that would power and brake. Hi everyone, welcome back. The last time we talked, we looked at a 2D industrial design on a piece of paper. And there's always a huge transition between something on paper and the next step. And the next step clearly, for me, was to get comfortable using 3D CAD again. As a mechanical engineer, I was 48 at the time and had played many roles. I had worked in the medical field, I'd worked in the aerospace field, I'd worked in the consumer products field. A lot of times my roles were directly as designing and testing product. I served roles as project leaders to work cross-function to help drive a particular product to production. And I also was responsible many times for product portfolios that would define technology that we would pursue and eventually drive into products. Well, here I was capable of doing so many things except the most basic task of putting a design into the computer. So I spent two months working on that and I was inspired by the motorcycle. I started to look at chopper designs and cafe racer designs, wheel designs, structure of a motorcycle and begin to learn and take those findings and the exciting aesthetics from that product line and began to put them into our new roam board. So once the design was conceptually complete, an engineer by the name of Brady Calvert began to work with us as well as did Nick Brayman. And Brady took this tank and he prototyped it. And I gotta tell you, the guy is just amazing. This tank was hand built. He took pink foam cut out a male mold of pink foam, hand laid fiberglass over that, sanded down the fiberglass, and came up with a perfect exterior shape. Now, the inside looks horrible, but that's the way prototypes go. Here's an example of an early mock-up that we had done, and it shows where we have a battery pack, and we'll talk more about that later because this is one of the keys to our invention. It has a speed controller that resides underneath the tank and a charger. Very cool. So our battery pack is absolutely crucial to the fun factor of our board. It's a lithium polymer battery pack. It runs at 36 volts. It has 10 amp hours of energy. And this lithium polymer pack has as much response as a cord out of the wall. It's not like a normal battery. It has way more punch. Wait till you see the product run to see how fun that is. 
So now, in the spring of the following year, we had to go out and source multiple components. This set of machined aluminum parts is only one of three major aluminum assemblies. We worked really hard to go out and find vendors that would be willing to work with us and be excited about our product and know that it was going to be a success. So what's really cool about this aluminum assembly is the high speed carve and the excitement that comes to our realm board. This cover hides two springs which allow the rear axle to pivot and create a steering effect. We've duplicated that up in the front of the board and this spring truck spring axle assembly is what gives us the high speed fun. So now, let's spend some time talking about the low speed maneuverability that we knew we needed to accomplish. Here's one component of that. This looks like a steel bar, but it's actually a complex assembly. And one end of the steel bar is attached to the front board. The other end of the steel bar is attached to the back board. When a user goes out to ride, this bar assembly allows them to turn the front board independently of the rear board. There we go. Something's always got to crash, right? So that independent turning action is one of the key things to low speed maneuverability. The second one is in our front axle assembly. And in this front axle assembly, we still have the same springs that allow it to turn at high speed. We then went and borrowed automotive technology. We have a tie rod system from the center to each wheel. And so at low speed, the tie rod system has the ability to turn the wheels further than they would normally go with the truck system alone. So we had a prototype mock-up system. We put this together, and this was now last summer. So we had been working on this project at this point for almost exactly a year. We put our first two prototypes together, and we started to ride them. And everybody who saw these boards, everybody who we had ride these boards, just couldn't comment enough on, wow, what is that thing? Wow, that is so cool. Man, that is going to be the next big thing.